morning. So I um, will keep this, I think, relatively brief because I know there are a lot of questions out there, but I'm thrilled to be here this morning and talk about the Detroit Land Bank Authority and what's happening at the land bank. Some of you may have uh, heard about us over the years. The land bank has been around for a few years, but for all intents and purposes, um, the last few months, basically a startup organization that is very, very different from how it's been all the other years. So where we are right now, the things that, there are three things I would say that are defining our activity, our vision, our focus for the Detroit Land Bank Authority under the new administration. And we've been working on these again really since, just since January. In January we've got a brand new board. We have a new uh, agreement with the state that controls the land bank um, that defines kind of what we can do, what we can't do. And, and basically entirely new staff. Um, and so it, most of that was necessitated by this shift in vision and focus and priority. So that shift in vision and focus and priority, again, there are three things. The first and foremost, Vicky Kilgari um, spoke to the Department of Neighborhoods, and that's the importance of consolidating public land ownership. Detroit Future City, two years ago, they were using numbers that were then conservative of the amount of land that's publicly held. And the numbers at the time were something like 85,000 parcels within the city of Detroit. That's a huge, staggering number, 85,000 parcels. And these are within the public inventory, they're owned by nine different entities. So five entities within the city of Detroit, the planning department, the land bank, the water department, the housing commission, you know, all of that. And then on top of that, you have the Wayne County Land Bank. And on top of that, you have the Wayne County Treasurer. And on top of that, you have the state of Michigan Land Bank. And so, um, as I know from my years working in the community, and many of you know from trying to buy land or trying to do anything with land that's publicly held, the first question is, who owns that land? And if you wanted to get two lots that were side by side, maybe for a garden, maybe to ex expand your house's footprint, for any other you know, great use that you have for that land, you might have to go to two or three different bureaucracies, two or three different phone numbers, wait in two or three different lines, forms, different costing, all of that. And that's not, that doesn't work. That clearly doesn't work. So instead of getting this land back into productive use, what we found is having those nine different public entities um, with their own priorities and processes and bureaucracies and all of that was not getting the land in productive use. It was keeping the land as a liability, not allowing it to become the asset, which it truly is for our city. So the mayor prioritized that and said, gave us a very clear charge, consolidate as much public land as you can so that people would have a one-stop shop. Now, we're not getting you know, right there to a one-stop shop, but I'm happy to say that over the last few months, we have negotiated agreements with the state of Michigan with the Wayne County Treasurer and the Wayne County Land Bank for all of them to transfer all of their land to the city. Because as the mayor campaigned on and also as he holds us accountable to every single week when we meet with him, he says, the city of Detroit cannot control its future unless it controls its land. And part of that is to allow us to be able to get that back into productive use through you all and through other residents in Detroit. So that's one of the primary things that we're focusing on. Hand in hand with that, I think you mentioned the close partnership between the new administration and the city council. Um, some of you might have read about in the news or heard in other sources that in April, the city of Detroit, I'm sorry, Detroit City Council authorized a land transfer agreement of 16,000 residential structures that are currently, that were low, um, owned by the city of Detroit Planning and Development Department. So those are currently in process coming over to the Detroit Land Bank. And uh, that's, again, the residential structures. We did not receive the commercial industrial or vacant land at that point. So that's still with the planning and development department, but we're working closely with them to you know, try to make it as seamless as customer service experience for all of you and for any other residents and stakeholders in Detroit. One of the reasons, so this seems to be the second point of priority of what we're focusing on right now, and that's um, the hardest hit fund, demolition activity. And one of the reasons why we asked city council to transfer the 16,000 residential structures is because we would then be able to demolish those structures or begin chipping away. It's a big number, 16,000, but we're steadily you know, uh, chipping away at that hundreds of properties every month. Um, and we're increasing that number over the course of the summer and moving through that. So that, again, for those of you who've heard about it, it's the hardest hit fund. This is $52 million that came from the federal government, from the Treasury Department. These are old TARP funds. And the purpose of these is to take out dangerous buildings that are in the public ownership in order to stabilize neighborhoods. And that is one of, of a variety of different 
pools of money that exist for demolition, but it's the one pool of money that the Detroit Land Bank Authority is overseeing. And so the basic requirement there is that it's got to be publicly owned, it's got to be within a targeted hardest-hit fund area, and it's got to um, be a residential structure. Um, we're working to try to find resources for commercial demolition, because we know that's a huge issue in these neighborhoods. Uh, and so we can come to, you know, we'll find out more about all of that you know, as we go, but we, we understand that's an important thing that has to happen as well. And so it's not, we're just doing this and kind of resting on it, but we're doing this and then pushing constantly to find other resources. And I also wanted on that note to, to acknowledge, as Vicki spoke about, the need for, for responses to blight that are not just demolition. There's absolutely no way that we can demolish our way out of this problem, um, the problem of blight. And there was a story that ran in the, maybe the news of the Free Press a few weeks ago that tracked all of the demolitions that have happened in the city of Detroit for the last like, 30 years. And it just shows you know, so much money to put a price tag on it as well. And it showed that demolition after demolition itself cannot fully take care of the question of blight. Um, though, I nonetheless maintain as a resident in my neighborhood, as, you know, in a neighborhood in Detroit as well, that there is a need for demolition, but I'm under, and our board and the leadership of the land banks are under no illusion that demolition alone will suffice. So we're working with banks, we're working with other institutions, the State Housing Development Authority, anyone we can talk with, the federal government, to try to find funds available for rehab. Um, you may have heard about some initiatives like Palmer Bank announcing a million dollar forgivable loan in Marygrove. Um, for folks who buy properties there. And we think that that's very, very important in terms of one way to get some money into, back into the neighborhoods. At the same time, we were very involved, we've been involved in conversations with Chase Bank. And there was an announcement a week or two ago that they were gonna donate $100 million to Detroit. Um, some of that money will be earmarked, we won't be administering all that money, but nonetheless, some of that money will be administered, uh, earmarked for rehab. And that was something that, when they came to us and said, how can we support blood elimination? We said, don't give, you, know, you don't give it to us, but you need to make it available somehow, some, some way, to support rehab in the community. And we're having similar conversations, very encouraging conversations, with, I don't know, five, six other national banks um, who want to be helpful in Detroit and are trying to find that way. So it's not about the land bank, it is about stabilizing neighborhoods. And if, they, if we can find a way to open up some of those resources, then I think that'll be absolutely crucial for, this, uh, for the citizens of Detroit and. The, you know, stability of our neighborhoods. So more to be decided and more to be announced on that, you know, as those things unfurl. But those are at least two announcements I wanted to remind you of. And the third, the third priority that we're uh, working on right now is the nuisance abatement program. Some of you may recall there used to be a nuisance abatement program at the Wayne County Treasurer's, or at the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. And that was set up back in 1998-2000 by uh, then Prosecutor Mike Duggan. So when he was campaigning for mayor, he ran on and said, this worked when we were at the prosecutor's office. I want to bring it back and I'm going to house it at the land bank. And so for those of you who don't recall that, basically we file lawsuits against negligent property owners who are not taking care of their property to the point where it's not only blight, but it's actually posing a, a direct public health and safety hazard to the community and to residents in, that in those neighborhoods. And how we select where we're focusing those properties, or those lawsuits I should say, is through a cl very close partnership with the Department of Neighborhoods. Um, we're working with them on everything that we do because it's a direction from the mayor and also from our board and leadership that we are not, <laughs> it will happen I said this, but um, we're just tools. I mean, the, the land bank is a tool and it's a tool that exists to, uh, yeah, I said that. <laughs> it's a tool that exists um, to support the activity in the neighborhoods. And in terms of what's the priority, what's the property that should be, you know, what's the neighborhood where it'll have the greatest impact, this week as opposed to next week, what, which property should we be demolishing or not demolishing or filing a lawsuit against. We're looking to the community groups and primarily through the district managers who are on the ground, as Vicki said, not you know, stowed away in their offices, but out in the neighborhood, out in you know, meeting with residents, meeting with community groups, meeting with churches all the time. So it's our thought the best way to provide the best service to residents of Detroit is to go through the district managers who are embedded, who are on the ground, who are living and walking the streets every single day. So with that, I want to get right to questions, and yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you.